I do miss doing a fans react when I'm genuinely happy to watch my football club play or genuinely happy and looking forward to going to Molyneux or away games. At the minute, it seems like a chore. I hate it. I hate going, but we still go. But I think today is just a microcosm of um, the, the bigger picture at Wolves, which in no uncertain terms is an absolute shit show from top to bottom. Um, we'll talk about the game, but it's... <laughs> If you haven't watched the interview with uh, Roman Saiz uh, that we did, make sure you go and watch it because I think it'll explain things a lot more better from the horse's mouth. But from top to bottom, no one's no one's got a clue. You've, uh, fans bane, bane for blood for Scott Sellers today. I understand the frustrations, but I really don't think that he's the sole reason and the sole problem. I think the problem goes above, and I think that's the, the problem with Jeff. The structure of the, the, the club is is ridiculous. I don't know. And Romain Say said this. I've never known a club like it. In most football clubs, you'll have the owner, which would be Jeff. And then you'd have a chief executive and a director of football, a sporting director, working closely together on the day-to-day. But we've had the likes of Dalrymple go, Thelwell go. Because Jeff, in my opinion, wants all the control and all the power. And that is not conducive to running a football club. Today, I thought we started well. Um, first 10 minutes was good, uh, but after that, it was it was dreadful. Um, apart from the five minutes in, in the second half. First couple of goals, Johnny running in concrete boots. Been awful all season. Um, shouldn't be playing, but then Samado goes and chucks two in a, a, against Palace. It's just, it's, it's rotten. It's absolutely rotten. Uh, yeah, I don't agree with the... Singing weird fucking shit and all that. I don't think it helps. But what what else have, what else have we got to sing about? It's it's so toxic there at the minute, um, and it's bold of the club to assume that we're going to be still afloat come January twenty twenty three when they want to appoint a new manager. Because um, plot twist, we're not going to be with performances like that. The whole situation around the managerial departure and acquisition. Is nothing short and negligible, and in any other business, heads would heads would would roll, so they should. So for me, whoever's looking at this from a hierarchical point of view for Fosum, they need to sort it out because their investment and their asset is about to become a whole less worth than what it is now. Shambles. So Wolves losing out four goals to nil to Leicester in one of the games I actually managed to stay up and watch. And my word, it was not worth the extra two hours of sleep saved. Uh, or It was not worth losing the two hours of sleep, I should say, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, pretty hopeless performance, to be honest. Um, not helped, I think, by the outside circumstances. Um, obviously, the managerial search that has been going on has been an absolute mess and coming into the game. There is that negative atmosphere around the club. Um, but in fairness, I thought the performance was actually, uh, in the first half more so, was very good. Created chances, um, were able to press well, and were at least showing energy and a bit of drive and a bit of energy to get forward and look like a team that had some fight in them. But the problem begins with conceding and assume, it almost feels like the team gives up as soon as they concede the first goal um, which is never a good sign you need a team that's going to fight uh, you need a team that's going to have a bit of desire to try and get themselves back into a game we just didn't have that at all today in fairness an unbelievable goal by Tielemans to start Leicester's route and I, it kind of just felt like after that we really weren't going to get back into the game despite us creating chances and still looking lively there just isn't that edge to us uh, we just can't seem to convert the chances Danny Ward had a good game which it kind of is sod's law that he turns up against us I know he's improved in recent weeks and Leicester have improved as well but we just look disjointed uh, it was I think despite us creating chances and having a lot of shots it all felt very one-dimensional it was being played to Adama a lot and he was really most of our attacking output I thought the midfield today, the spaces in the, in between our midfield and forward line was ridiculously big at some points. It just looks so disjointed. There's no real uh, sort of tactical shape or awareness. The players don't seem to really know what they're doing. Mateusz Nunes looks really off it. 
But again, he's not even been playing in the right position. He's been played more so in attacking midfield, which he just isn't. He's more of a six or an eight. So it's just very, very strange decisions. Substitutions again. But the defending for the four goals, I mean, the first one, fair enough. But the, the defending for the, the next three, I mean, Harvey Barnes's was just far too easy. And it was the same with the other two as well. The space in behind the fullbacks was absolutely killing us. I will say, though, Hugo Bueno had a very good game. Very impressed with him. But Johnny, my word, he does play like a player that has had two ACL injuries. Terrible today. Got cooked every time by Barnes. Um, and it was really killing us. Semedo should have come on at half-time, as should have Bubakar Traore, I think. Matinho looked a bit leggy um, in the second half. I think that Semedo and Traore coming on in the second half might have given us a bit more of an edge, a bit more of a chance. Um, Costa, again, I think he's still getting back up to full sharpness, which isn't his fault. Um, but he's he's causing problems, but he just needs to find that finishing touch. And again, our forward line just not really doing the business today. And Gonzalo Guedes not even getting on the pitch. Chem Campbell ahead of him in the pecking order now. I don't know what the hell's going on with him. It's just so many problems at the moment. Fitness issues, defensive issues, so much space in the lines. That so many half spaces Wolves are leaving. It's far too easy to expose us. We're not getting uh, full. We're not able to score and we're far too open, it's not a good combination of, of things really. And I just think that unfortunately the, the interim managers and coaches are just out of their depth and the whole everything just seems to be falling apart. Um, after what was a, an incredibly positive summer with a lot of money spent, um, in hindsight I think Bruno Large maybe could have gone before the start of the season, but this is just turning into a real, real toxic season. Reminds me very much of the 2012 season we went down, uh, under Mick McCarthy and of course Terry Connor after that um, there's just so many similarities and a lack of fight in this team is scary it really is there's no no passion there just everything feels devoid of anything at the moment there's just a lack of substance a lack of tactical ingenuity lack of fluidity lack of ideas from the top down we're in absolute shambles Jeff Shee and Scott Sellers have put themselves in a real mess um, the managerial search was a joke the recruitment, despite looking good, just doesn't seem to be being used properly. Um, I just cannot believe how badly uh, this team has been mismanaged. On paper, a very strong squad, and it's being mismanaged in the highest order. It's been messed up time and time and again, and it, it doesn't look good for us this season. Hopefully we can turn things around, but uh, my word, we need to kick up the backside. We're going down, plain and simple. No ifs, no buts, no maybes. We are going down. We've got a manager in charge whose last job was getting sacked in the National League. We've got a technical director who's never been in charge as a technical director. He's been a failed youth coach. He's now calling the shots with fucking bringing players on pretty much. And we've got an owner who's completely neglected this whole football club. There is no fix to this. It's getting worse and worse and worse. And now look at the position that we're in. Considering that Jeff Shee's pretty much neglected the club for three fucking years, who's shocked we're in the position that we're in now? Only spending 100 million this summer was not going to fix the problem. It just papered over the cracks that have been there for God knows how many years. And Jeff Shee never addressed any of the issues. He never got the football men in to try and fix the football club. He only made the signings when he desperately needed to because we were going in a really bad position. And now we look at us, we're 19th, we've just lost at home to fucking Leicester, who, let's not forget, they were only below us in the table, you know, they've spent less money than us as well, and I'd argue player for player, we've arguably got very similar, if not we slightly edge it, they might slightly edge it, it's open for debate, it's open for interpretation. But the way we're playing, we look like a fucking championship team. We've got a squad that does not give a shit about the football club. Half the fuck is straight down the tunnel as soon as the game's finished. You've only got like three or four players that actually show like they give a fuck to play to this football club. Because they know that they're going to get these big moves at the end of the summer. So it doesn't really matter if they play shit now. Mendes is going to shop them off straight in the transfer market. And it's just a fucking joke. The clubs are fucking shambles. And there is no sign this is going to get fixed. <laughs> it's embarrassing. It's absolutely embarrassing. Almost as embarrassing as a scoreline today. Final score, Wolves nil, Leicester City 4. The team selection, Steve Davis, once again got it wrong for the second week in a row. 
Obviously, Samedo was really, really crap. I can understand that. But Johnny's not exactly much better defensively. And I'd argue Samedo adds more going forwards. And uh, Bubakar Traore, for, who I thought was probably one of our better players on Tuesday, is reward for that, of course, is a place on the bench because Jean Martinho has to play in every single football match now. He should have been phased out a couple of years ago. And yet he still seems like he's an important player when I don't even know what he brings. I mean, I was watching it on a stream and we had Dave Edwards as the co-commentator and Dave Edwards was just so like, yeah, Wolves are, Wolves are playing really well. This is probably the best they've played in a very, very long time. I'm not one to sound stupid or anything, but if this is us playing very well after 15 minutes going too fucking nil, then there's your problem right there. But the problem is, that was one of our better first half performances and we've still gone in 2-0 down. It's just embarrassing. Defensively, we don't have a clue like we don't have a clue what we're doing. There doesn't look it doesn't look like Kilman and Collins have ever played together defensively. They look a shambles. Midfield-wise, it was so easy to break us up defensively between the midfield, like defensively and midfield, because there's no link up there. There's no link up between the midfield and the attack. And we just weren't creating any opportunities. I can think of one opportunity from Podence, which was a good save. And Diego Costa having a shot blocked. Other than that, we didn't really create anything. Essentially, our tactic was, you know, just get the ball wide, get it in the left side, then ping it to Adama, and Adama might get a decent first touch. And that, that was it, to be honest. It was just fucking so predictable. And then as soon as we go 3-0 down, you could tell that it was coming, though. We just started we started the second half quite well, to be fair. Like, we started to show a little bit of attacking urgency, which, you know, for this season for Wolves, that seems a little bit foreign. Um, and then, of course, we go 3-0 down. Leicester slow the game down. Madison has an opportunity. 3-0. That's it. Game over. Even though it was, we all knew it was already game over as soon as he hit 2-0. And then for the fourth goal, fucking hell. Vardy's got the freedom of Molyneux to do whatever they want. He was on, Mo he was on Molyneux Alley by the time that he got that ball. It was just embarrassing. Just the basics weren't done. We've got Steve Davis, who's horrendously out of his depth. Uh, but again, apparently there's no other better candidates at this like that can take over than Steve Davis. We've got Sellers in charge pretty much of everything upstairs, which is shit. You've got Jeff Shee, who's worse than shit. And Guayo Guangchan, who's just watching on, just not, not really giving a fuck, really. Um, but this issue's been here for three years. We had this issue when we first got into Europe um, in the um, 1920 season. The transfer window then was neglected. We only improved the squad. We never improved the starting eleven. The next season, we did exactly the same trip. We was not improving the squad. We was not really spending any money. The money that we were spending was from selling players. The year after that, it was again a similar process for three fucking years there. You've been neglecting the squad for donkey's years. And now, this is the one time that we make all of the changes in there. We've got a manager, Bruno, who didn't have a clue how he was going to be monitoring these players. But Sellers is the one that's making all of the signings. She's making all the signings. And they have made crap signings that do not suit the team. Nunes, I think, is a good player, but he sometimes just doesn't really look arsed. And I don't really want to be slagging off Mateus Nunes. He's our club record signing. And for me, I think he's a very, very good footballer. But it just doesn't seem like he suits what we're trying to do, which is a shame. He'll go to a top team and he'll be the best player there. But when you neglect it for three years and you have one transfer window where you spend over 100 million, that's meant to paper over all of the cracks that have been there before that, you know, were never addressed in the first place. He got rid of the heart. He got rid of the soul of Wolverhampton that made a lot of fans fall back in love with the football club. Getting rid of Dalrymple, getting rid of Felwell, the, f the football person there, who personally I didn't think did a good job. But he got rid of the football people there. He got rid of the person that communicated well with the fans. And now look at the shit show that we're in. Is it a fucking surprise we're in this position? It's fine though, because we'll go into the championship. We've got a record label. We've got an esports team. We'll have the best of that in the championship. It's it's all positive stuff here. Right. Thanks for having me on. Afternoon, Wolves fans. Well, that was fucking dreadful. <laughs> um, I can't remember the last time I left a game early. Obviously, apart from when like, I've had like a few things to do, like I've had to leave for work and stuff before. But today I did. I'm not, not even ashamed to say it. Um, I just couldn't watch any more. Four 0 down. I did stay for another ten minutes after that fourth goal, and yeah, fuck me. I took the missus today for a, a 30th birthday. What a fucking treat that was. <laughs> um, yeah, we we lack everything at the moment. Desire, passion. Oh, 
I mean, I suppose the first 15 minutes, we should have scored a goal or two. You take your chances and maybe the game's different, but we, we didn't. Again, same story, week in, week out. Um, I mean, their first a stunner in it, but coming from a stupid Johnny mistake. Um, I don't know what's going on with Johnny. I used to love him. One of my favourite players, and now he's, he's I, can't, I can't tell you his last good game. Abysmal. Um, but everyone, not not just him. So, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. We, we seem to lack ideas. It seemed to be a, a case of get the ball try, try or again and hope he can do something. And at times he did, and he tried hard. But, yeah, he's not working with a lot, is he? No one is. Um... Oh yeah, I've got nothing really good to say. I think we massively miss a leader at the moment, some leadership. I think the only thing we've really got at the moment is obviously Neves. He's an, he's an alright leader, he's fine, but he's not what Cody was. I mean, you've got Diego bollocking people when they're not putting a shift in. But no one really seems asked. Johnny, when I saw him give the ball away in the second half and he started jogging back, oh my God, I was infuriated. Put a fucking shift in. Same for everyone though. Put a fucking shift in. At least the young lads like Bueno, when he when he made a mistake, lost the ball, he'd fucking get back and go, shit, I've made a mistake. I need to fucking work hard. That seems to be lacking massively at the moment. It's people actually wanting to work hard, dig in. You're not going to win a game of pretty football at the moment, so fucking put your body on the line and fucking work. Shit. Uh, I don't know where we get out of this at the moment, especially when Davies is in charge now till the new year. And there's no disrespect to Davies. I like him as a bloke. Big Wolves fan, but he's in at the deep end and he, he, he's he's sinking, not swimming, isn't he? Um, you've got to get a strong manager in now. The board have got to rethink what the, whatever they said about waiting for the right manager, and I get that. But you could be cut adrift by then. You could be rooted to the bottom of the table and then no one comes in anywhere because no one wants that job. Um, who in the right mind is in the decent manager, who, the profile of manager we want, he's going to go, oh, yeah, you, you're six points adrift at the bottom of the table, but I'll, I'll take that on. They're not because they're just going to lose stock themselves and no one takes it on. You've got to go and get someone now. You've got to act now. You've got to go and get a, a manager that's got a strong personality that can sort the dressing room out a little bit, put his mark on the team, sh like make us solid again for, for the start. I don't know where we go from here, but something's got to change because at the moment we're falling apart, aren't we, as a club? And I think, I think there's something deep-rooted wrong in the club at the moment coming from the top, but I, I don't think that's... Um, that's something I'm saying myself. I think that's uh, said by most at the moment. Yeah, on to the next, unfortunately. I'm not really sure where to start, to be honest. So it took me three hours to get to the game. Train cancellations, all kind of shit, whatever. All I wanted, despite the fact that it was an obvious three-pointer today, all I wanted was a performance to make my trip worth a while. And I could not have been further from what I actually got. I have never in the, what, 12, 13 years I've had a season ticket seen a performance that pathetic from a team so capable of doing thing, like special things. I, I can't quite get my head around it, to be honest. <laughs> like wor words fail me I before like the first goal goes in and there's not a lot you can do about that like it's just a good goal fair enough you take it on the chin you get back to it from then on there was not a single player on the pitch who put in a performance worthy of that shirt not one apart from maybe Bueno because he wasn't involved in the game enough to make a mistake but Johnny I don't know what's happened to Johnny. I understand he's had two lengthy injuries. But Jesus Christ, he must have been spun about seven times. I, I, I genuinely don't understand how a player could decline that rapidly. He was one of our best players before. And he was a liability out there today. The forwards... I, 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 I just don't have any words. I'm... Every single one of them, the ball gets played into you, right? And you stood on your heels with four players around you and you just lose the fucking ball straight away. Every single one of them, every single fucking time. It was pathetic. The whole performance, pathetic. We made a team who couldn't win to save their lives look like a European team. It, it's inexcusable. It is simply inexcusable. <laughs> 
I'm trying to find positives to take from today's game, and I, I simply can't find any. I, there's there's nothing positive I could possibly bring to this. Nunes has cost us 40 million quid. And I thought, you know what? First couple of games, we'll give him a minute to settle in. It, it's been rubbish. There's, I can't defend him anymore. But it's not like it's not like there's anybody there that's kind of... I'm lost for words. I'm really trying to... I'm really trying to piece something together here. I, just, I can't do it. What a waste of a fucking afternoon. If we play like that for the rest of this season, we'll be one of the worst teams the Premier League's ever seen with a squad that could very easily be pushing for Europe if it was playing to its best of it to the best of its abilities. I I'm clueless as to what to do from here. If we've got more performances like that between now and the new year will be well adrift by Christmas. That's all I've got to say, really. Thanks for having me on. Have a good night. Well, where do you even start with that one? Uh, Wolves nil, Leicester 4. Losing 4 nil at home to uh, what the table tell you is probably one of the worst teams in the league. Frustrating doesn't even cut it, to be honest. Um, started off well, I thought. Played some good football. Knocked it around well, created a few half chances, probably nothing really sort of real guilt edge, but ball just wouldn't go in the back of the net. And then Johnny forgets how to control the ball. Tielemans pulls off an absolute worldie from outside the box and suddenly we're one nil down. Um, which is, you know, disappointing, but it, it's one nil. We go again, let, let's try and keep pushing. And and we we did, we got back on the ball, we tried to play again and suddenly Johnny gets done with a one two on the on the edge of the box and we're two nil down. Um quite how Johnny lasted until the 65th minute before he was hooked I, I really don't know if I'm being generous given till half time to be honest once that second goal went in may as well have taken him off then it cost us two goals two nil down already but he, he, he's not to blame for the overall scoreline um, went in at half time two nil down thinking okay come on let's change something here let's, let's try and keep pushing keep going forward and it was all pretty pathetic to be honest a lot, a lot of backwards a lot of sideways tell the crowd weren't happy um then suddenly we find ourselves 3-0 down, and, and at 3-0, really, all, all the players gave up. Um, I, I, I was fearful when Leicester made three subs, I think it was at once, um, and we didn't make any. Uh, we then decided to make, a, I think it was a triple change, but when we were already 3-0 down by that point, so it was it was too little too late, and I was talking to a few people before the game and saying, my, my concern really is that you've got people like Brendan Rodgers in the opposition dugout, knows what he's doing, been there, done that, can give half-time team talks, can make tactical changes, make the right substitutions at the right time. And, and who have we got? Apparently, if you if the rumours are to be believed, we've got Scott Seller sat in the stands telling everyone what to do. Which, if that's what he's doing, it, it's no surprise that we can't get a new manager in. And he's got no credentials whatsoever, despite what some journalists keep trying to say on Twitter. Got no credentials to be anywhere near the running, day-to-day -day football running of a football club. Um, and especially not on a, on a match day. Uh, and Davis... And his, and his mate, whose name escapes me, I've got no pedigree. I'm, I'm sure they're nice blokes. Steve Davis comes across really well, pre-match, post-match, clearly passionate. He, he's one of us, he's one of us fans, but managed Crawley and Leighton Orient and, and sacked from the latter. That's that's no credentials for a, for a Premier League manager. And let, let's be honest, we're in a real scrap now. This is a Premier League relegation battle and we need a manager that can get players up for a relegation battle in the Premier League. And, and these two aren't it. And, and giving them it on a permanent basis, or at least a semi-permanent basis, I think it's the worst thing we could do, at least on a caretaker basis. The players are thinking, who are we bringing in? Is the manager watching? I need to be on my A game. They know this guy's there now until January. And, and as much as he's probably a nice guy, they probably like him. Is the respect really there? You know, these, these are top-level Premier League players. They need a top-level Premier League manager. But I don't trust she and Stella, Sellers to get anybody in, to be honest. Sellers got away lightly, in my opinion, today. A few chants about him. I thought there might be a lot more. And, and Jeff, she escapes criticism from the, the masses today. But I think it's only a matter of time. But, but we need to get somebody in and quick. Because this is not looking good. And the players, for me, gave up at 3-0. And that's probably the worst thing. We need a manager in there. Can get him by the scruff of the neck. To be honest, I'd be quite happy if, if Foson's chairman come over. Sack, sack, sack Jeff, she sack sellers, get rid of a lot of them, get a director of football in and let's run it like a proper football club. 
Um, not the shambles it is at the moment, but Brentford next week. Um, glad I'm not going now. <laughs> Seems like the right decision. Um, but yeah, we, we need a win desperately, but we didn't even look like winning today. So we started okay, but as soon as we went 1-0 down, you, you fear the worst and ended up four. And to be honest, probably could have been more if Leicester wanted to, but we go again. But yeah, we, we can't go into 2023 without, without a new manager and we, we're going to be in trouble.